Another announcement is that um, for those who will be receiving communion, uh, we ask that for those who are not, who have not received the First Holy Communion, that you hold your hands like this, and the Eucharistic minister will give you a blessing. Thank you all for being here today, and to each and every single one of you, thank you for being part of this beautiful Mass.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Celine and Matthew, the church shares your joy and warmly welcomes you together with your family and friends as today, in the presence of God our Father, you establish between yourselves a lifelong partnership. May the Lord hear you on this joyful day. May he send you help from heaven and protect you. May he grant you your heart's desire and fulfill every one of your prayers. Let us pray. O God, who in creating the human race willed that man and wife should be one, join, we pray, in a bond of inseparable love, these your servants, who are to be united in the covenant of marriage, so that as you make their love fruitful, they may become, by your grace, witnesses to charity itself. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God said, It is not good for a man to be alone. I will make a suitable partner for him. So the Lord God formed out of the ground various wild animals and various birds of the air 
and he brought them to the man to see what he would call them. Whatever the man called each of them would be its name. The man gave names to all the cattle, all the birds of the air, and all wild animals, but none proved to be suitable partner for the man. So the Lord God cast a deep sleep on the man, and while he was asleep, he took out one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. The Lord God then built up into a woman the rib that he had, he had taken from the man. When he brought her to the man, the man said, This one, at last, is the bone of my bones and the flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman, for out of her man's the man this one has been taken. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and clings to his wife, and the two of them become one body. The word of the Lord.
reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, strive eagerly for the greatest spiritual gifts, but I shall show you a still more excellent way. If I speak in human and angelic tongues, but do not have love, I am a resounding gong or a clashing cymbal. And if I have the gift of prophecy and comprehend all mysteries and all knowledge, if I have all faith so as to move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away everything I own, and if I hand my body over so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, it is not jealous, it is not pompous, it is not inflated, it is not rude, it does not seek its own interests, it is not quick-tempered, it does not brood over injury, it does not rejoice over wrongdoing, but rather rejoices with the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus raised his eyes to heaven and said, I pray not only for my disciples, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, so that they may all be one, as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. And I have given them the glory you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me that they may be brought to perfection as one, that the world may know that you sent me and that you love them even as you loved me. Father, they are your gift to me. I wish that where I am, they also may be with me, 
that they may see my glory that you gave me, because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world also does not know you, but I know you, and they know that you sent me. I made known to them your name, and I will make it known that the love with which you loved me may be in them and I in them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Wow. Usually I think that the Pope's coronation is the most meticulously planned grand liturgy in the church. But I think this wedding may be giving it a run for its money. So uh, I know we won't have an opportunity to applaud this grand uh, choir here. Let's do that before we go to the next part. So really it doesn't surprise me. Planning is just Matthew's M.O. Take, for example, his proposal to Celine. This was a complex, well-oiled machine that rivals an episode of Mission Impossible. Uh, I, I really, it was called Operation Wedding Bells. They had a code name for his proposal. And um, it was his cousins who helped them with it. They took the name The Avengers, which gave Matthew the role of Captain America. So this was well planned. They were going to tell Celine that she was going to help them with a surprise birthday party for, no, that's right, you didn't know anything. No, no, I thought you thought, that it, oh, never mind. <laughs> well, all I know is this. Everything was planned to the minute, but they arrived a little early. And so uh, Josh was on the phone uh, quietly trying to uh, find out what was going on. And apparently the big question was popped. And all Celine could say at the moment was, you lied to me. Okay. <laughs> I got that right, huh? <laughs> okay. okay. Forgive him. This isn't a routine thing. This was a special thing. This isn't going to happen <laughs> again. So anyway, it all came off, and here we are today celebrating this beautiful day. But it did give me the idea for a good gift. Hold on. So. Now, you guys are not the only one who plan things very well. God plans things very well. And you chose this re these readings because that's what you wanted to say. This is part of God's plan for the two of you. And not just for the two of you, but for all of creation, all the world. That beautiful reading from Genesis is a reminder to us that God gave man and woman to each other as companions in life, as partners in life, which the beautiful liturgy of our church reminds us and its teachings tell us marriage is a partnership of the whole of your life. And so you give each other, give yourself to the other in the bond of marriage. It's the only sacrament in the church in which I don't do it. You do it for each other. I'm just the official witness of the church. And there's other witnesses with us here. I'd like to, again, have everyone welcome Father Joy and Father Mike to our celebration. Thank you. 
So how does, yeah, you can pass those off. You don't want to be holding those when you're. <laughs> um, and God also plans it very well by telling us that love is at the center of it. That second reading is so beautiful because it says love is at the center of everything. You know, the things Paul says are not good without love, that's not an exhaustive list. There are many, many, many things, perhaps most all things, that are not very good if love is not at the center of it. By the same token, the blessings that he says comes from love is not an exhaustive list. There are many, many, many blessings that come when love is at the center of it. And so that is what uh, marriage is all about. It's why that beautiful reading is chosen by the church uh, for weddings, because it says that this wedding is a unity of love. It is two people pledging their love to each other. Now in our gospel today, Jesus says the same thing. He says to his disciples, love has to be the center of what you are about. That's what I tell you, love one another as I have loved you. That's the beauty of it. Jesus knew the Father's plan for him, and he knew that love was at the center of it as well, even though it would mean going to the cross for him and great difficulty for his mother and for the disciples. And yet, it was an act of pure love. His sacrifice is the model for us. To love to the extent of giving one's life for another, that's the, the ultimate expression of love. That's the beauty of the cross. God's son who gave the ultimate sacrifice for us. But here again, love was rewarded. Love saw Jesus through and there was a resurrection. And that too is a, an act of love, not just for Jesus, but for all of us. So a wedding, a wedding is a celebration of life. A wedding is a celebration of even a new life, the life that is made in the bond of marriage. And what a beautiful, again, understanding that is that to the extent that you, Matthew, and Celine love each other, you are a reflection of God's love to everyone else. You're like a mirror. You're like bouncing God's love back out to the world. And so all your family and friends, you who are gathered here today to celebrate this moment with them, you're not just passive witnesses you are called to help them live that love, to remove obstacles that are in their path to that love, to lay out a, a road for them, if you will, so that that love may flourish between them and be a reflection of God's love to the world. <clears throat> Dearly beloved, you have come together into the house of the church so that in the presence of the church's minister and the community, your intention to enter into marriage may be strengthened by the Lord with a sacred seal. Christ abundantly blesses the love that binds you. Through a special sacrament, he enriches and strengthens those he has already consecrated by holy baptism to assume all the responsibilities of married life. And so in the presence of the church, I ask you now to state your intentions. Matthew and Celine, have you come here to enter into marriage 
without coercion, freely and wholeheartedly. I have. Are you prepared as you follow the path of marriage to love and honor each other for as long as you both shall live? I am. Are you prepared to accept children lovingly from God and to bring them up according to the law of Christ and his church? And since it is your intention to enter into the covenant of holy matrimony, join your right hands and declare your consent before God and his church. I, Matthew, take you, Celine, to be my wife. I, Matthew, take you, Celine, to be my wife. I promise to be faithful to you. I promise to be faithful to you. In good times and in bad. In good times and in bad. In sickness and in health. To love you and to honor you. To love you and to honor you. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. I, Celine, take you, Matthew, to be my husband. I, Celine, take you, Matthew, to be my husband. I promise to be faithful to you. I promise to be faithful to you. In good times and in bad. In good times and in bad. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love you and to honor you. To love you and to honor you. All the days of my life. May the Lord in his kindness strengthen the consent you have declared before the church and graciously bring to fulfillment his blessing within you. What God joins together, let no one put asunder. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, if you'll bring the rings forward. May the Lord bless these rings which you will give to each other as a sign of love and fidelity. Celine received this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Matthew received this ring. Matthew received this ring. As a sign of my love. As a sign of my love. And fidelity. And fidelity. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. And now if the coins, the aras would be brought forward. Bless, O Lord, these coins that Matthew and Celine will give to each other and pour over them the abundance of your good gifts. Celine received these coins as a pledge of God's blessings and a sign of the good gifts we will share. Matthew received these coins, received these coins as, a as a pledge of God's blessings, God's blessings. And, a and a sign of the good gifts we will share. And now, dear brothers and sisters, as we call to mind the special gift of grace and charity by which God has been pleased to crown and consecrate the love of our sister Celine and our brother Matthew, let us commend them to the Lord. Please stand. To each of these we respond, Lord, hear our prayer. That these faithful Christians, Celine and Matthew, newly joined in holy matrimony, may always enjoy good health and well-being. Let us pray to the Lord. That God will bless their covenant as he chose to sanctify the marriage at Cana in Galilee. Let us pray to the Lord.
that they may be granted perfect and fruitful love, peace and strength, and that they bear faithful witness to the name of Christian. Let us pray to the Lord. That all the Christian people may grow in virtue day by day, and that all who are burdened by any need may receive the help of grace from above. Let us pray to the Lord. That the grace of the sacrament will be renewed by the Holy Spirit in all married persons here present. Let us pray to the Lord. For all the members of our families who have passed from this world, and for all the faithful departed. Let us pray to the Lord. Graciously pour out upon this husband and wife, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and make them of one heart and one soul, so that nothing whatever may divide those you have joined, and no harm come to those you have filled with your blessings through Christ our Lord. Let us be seated now as our gifts are brought forward. Thank you. 
Receive, we pray, O Lord, the offering made on the occasion of this sealing of the sacred bond of marriage. And just as your goodness is its origin, may your providence guide its course through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you have forged the covenant of marriage as a sweet yoke of harmony and an unbreakable bond of peace so that the chaste and fruitful love of holy matrimony may serve to increase the children you adopt as your own. By your providence and grace, O Lord, you accomplish the wonder of this twofold design, that while the birth of children brings beauty to the world, their rebirth in baptism gives increase to the church through Christ our Lord. Through him with the angels and all the saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our bishop, and Italo, our auxiliary bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being in paying their homage to you, the eternal God living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter, and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John, and Paul, Cosmos, and Damien, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers and all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among those you have chosen. 
Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, the offerings of your servants, Matthew and Celine, and of your whole family, who entreat your majesty on their behalf. And as you have brought them to their wedding day, so gladden them with your gift of the children they desire, and bring them in your kindness to the length of days for which they hope. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, Command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, all the saints, admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through him, 
you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. the um, lasso, the cord would be brought forward, and the veil. Bless, O Lord, this veil and cord, symbols of the indissoluble union that Celine and Matthew have established from this day forward before you and with your help. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly pray to the Lord that on these his servants now married in Christ, he may mercifully pour out the blessing of his grace and make of one heart in love by the sacrament of Christ's body and blood those he has joined by a holy covenant. O God, who by your mighty power created all things out of nothing, and when you had set in place the beginnings of the universe, formed man and woman in your own image, making the woman an inseparable helpmate to the man, that they might no longer be two but one flesh, and taught that what you were pleased to make one must never be divided. O God, who consecrated the bond of marriage by so great a mystery, that in the wedding covenant you foreshadowed the sacrament of Christ and his church. O God, by whom woman is joined to man, and the companionship they had in the beginning is endowed with the one blessing not forfeited by original sin, not washed away by the flood. Look now with favor on these your servants joined together in marriage who ask to be strengthened by your blessing. Send down on them the grace of the Holy Spirit and pour forth your love into their hearts that they may remain faithful in the marriage covenant. May the grace of love and peace abide in your daughter, Celine, and let her always follow the example of those holy women whose praises are sung in the scriptures. May her husband, Matthew, entrust his heart to her so that acknowledging her as his equal and his joint heir to the life of grace, he may show her due honor and cherish her always with the love that Christ has for his church. And now, Lord, we implore you, May these, your servants, hold fast to the faith and keep your commandments. Made one in the flesh, may they be blameless in all they do. And with the strength that comes from the gospel, may they bear true witness to Christ before all. May they be blessed with children and prove themselves virtuous parents who live to see their children's children. And grant that at, 
that reaching at last together the fullness of years for which they hope, they may come to the life of the blessed in the kingdom of heaven through Christ our Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. By the power of this sacrifice, O Lord, accompany with your loving favor what in your providence you have instituted, so as to make of one heart in love those you have already joined in this holy union and replenished with the one bread and one chalice through Christ our Lord. The Bible and the flowers to be presented be brought forward. Matthew and Celine receive the gift of this Bible so that the story of God and God's people may be with you in your home and incorporated into your marriage. Learn about the life and teachings of Jesus. Be open to how God may continue to speak to you through your reading of the scriptures together. And now as a sign of their love and devotion to our Blessed Mother and of their desire for Mary to aid them in their married life, Celine and Matthew will now present this arrangement of flowers before the statue of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Oh. 
The Lord be with you. Bow your heads for God's blessing. May God, the eternal Father, keep you of one heart in love for one another, that the peace of Christ may dwell in you and abide always in your home. Amen. May you be blessed in your children, have solace in your friends, and may Almighty God bless all of you gathered here, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Lean and Matthew, we congratulate you as you initiate your lifelong love for Christ and for one another. As an outward sign, you may now seal your love with a kiss. <laughs> and so may I introduce to you as husband and wife, Mr. and Mrs. Sarmiento. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.